Stud Doogie here with chapter 9 of my Dead Space 2 No Damage playthrough and Zealot difficulty. Before we get into the content of the video, I want to apologize to you guys for some of the, the sound quality issues that's been going on in my videos. When I record this commentary and I play it back, it contains none of the audible artifacts like the, the crackling and the popping and the, the buzzing sounds that end up getting produced in the final video so um, I want to apologize for that because it sucks I don't I don't like when that stuff happens to me when I'm listening to somebody's video and I and I'm not too proud of it happening uh, in my video so I've switched to a new video editing software I don't know how well this is gonna work but we'll see what happens hopefully it'll be better now listen up to this this story beat right there until you made me kill myself this just goes to show you what guilt does to people I know this is a made-up story this is make-believe but it represents a lot of the human condition because he said something which is wholly and totally ridiculous until you made me kill my or she said it but it's coming from his brain these are his thoughts these aren't her I think we've established that in a previous episode that we were in the mind of Isaac Nicole is dead and gone. She has no real presence except in his imagination. So for him to take responsibility for her death and to say that he made her kill herself, you know, that's complete and total bullshit. But it speaks to the human condition. We humans, we have a very self-centered, oversized, importance view of ourselves, like the world revolves around us, so he's, a, he's taking on a responsibility for something that he has no control over, um, and saying that he made her kill herself. N nothing's further from the truth, but that's what guilt does. Guilt is one of those emotions that twists our perception, and it's easy for that perception to be twisted because of the nature of being human and how we kind of see ourselves as being... Uh, at the center of the world and master of the universes and being able to do things or have effects that we really don't have any control over or have any real power over but we assume that we do so I, I just think that's really really cool really kind of powerful good story good writing uh, overall on their part to kind of put that in there so we're going to make a, a switch in costume here. Well, costume. <laughs> a switch in suits. It, I say costume because it looks like a costume, the one I'm about to put on. It kind of looks like something from a Marvel superhero, you know, because it's not bulky and, and mechanical. It's more spandexy and latexy. But the reason we're, we're switching it out is because it gives us 10% increased stasis duration. And we're going to go into the, one of these non-boss fight boss fights where uh, stasis duration is useful for the fight. So it's not a huge bump. 10% is not a huge bump. It might give us a second or two. Uh, but we're going to take any advantage that we can. Um, you know, just because we have this cool stuff, might as well use it, I say. And plus, this is just a, a better visual in the mask, at least, looking suit. You know, we're going to see a lot more butt action. Because <laughs> this thing's so damn tight, but whatever. So we're going to come up on an on a, on a enemy here. We only see him, I think, like three times in the game. I don't know how those are missing. Like You, you see the dot right on his freaking belly. But he has these secondary enemies, which makes them interesting. I wonder what parts of his body those are made out of. They're <laughs> jumping on me. Look at that. He's like, I'm gonna get you, bitch. No, you're not. No, you're not. I hate that part when they're dead and they roam around like that. I always try to pick them up and slam them to make sure I don't accidentally um, get hit by one of the real ones. Yeah, so also in that, that little story bit, he she said... I had the best two years of my life. You know, that's that's some that's some dude thinking right there. That's some man. Actually, no, it's not specific to males. Okay, notice what I did there. I shot his explosive arm off because if it exploded, it would blow out the window and we would get sucked out. 
Uh, so there is a, a, a circuit down there which you want to get. But it was like the best two years of I had the best two years of my life. You know, that's some that's some self-centered thing. You know, what I mean, to think that we're like the best thing that happened. But then in the same breath, he turns around and takes responsibility for. Listen to this. Yeah, you wanted me to leave. He, Isaac is a tortured, tortured soul. This is so good. This is such a good examination of human psychology. Guilt, PTSD, a whole host of mental issues wrapped up uh, in the telling of this story. It's, it's just good stuff. Really good stuff. Really good writing, I think. And I, I guess part of the reason I'm focusing on, it on so much, focusing on it so much, is because I've been playing Dead Space Three. I spent the weekend playing Dead Space Three, and it does none of this. It it is far afield from the cycle. Listen to this part, and listen to her how her tone changes. She, she switched to that mommy tone. You can bear to find me. me, 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 me. That mommy tone. Me, 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 me. Poor Isaac. But we're still murdering shit. Yeah, so as I was saying, Dead Space 3, so far removed from uh, the survival horror genre that this game has certainly used to great effect. I love this dude, like he's gonna sneak up on somebody, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so far removed from the survival horror genre, uh, established in the first one, in, uh, and I refined to a certain extent in this one. Because this whole internal dialogue that's going on uh, between Isaac and, and Nicole, which really isn't a dialogue between Isaac and Nicole at all, it's a dialogue between Isaac and himself. As he processes his guilt, it's not even grief. You know, it's interesting. He's not suffering from grief. It's not sadness. It's not even loss. It's just pure guilt. I love how they set you up to think that you need to use stasis in order to do this because you see you have the stasis recharge station right there. Okay, watch, check this out. Look at the left side of the screen. So if you're doing this yourself, this is important. So you see him climb up on the left side. He doesn't have to go around. He can come right. But paying attention to the left side of the screen so you can predict where he's going to be so you can prioritize your target. And I love how he was hauling ass coming around, but we had plenty of time. Uh, to turn around and shoot him. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, here's another bit, another story bit. And before, we'll see that he's losing his grip. Right there. That, that sound, <laughs> this is a bit sound, man. I, Isaac's bitch made on for well I'm just fucking around because he isn't because I was a bad motherfucker but he got kind of bitch made right there but I the, the point I was make I'm making out the reason why I wanted you to pay attention to that is that I think it was in, in chapter three or was it chapter three or four one of those chapters where she's sitting on the bed he's he's moving through the barracks she's sitting on the bed and he says the same thing you're not Nicole you're not real but he was more grounded more sure of himself compared to this encounter where you can see he's starting to lose his grip a little bit and he's like, you're not my girl. <laughs> oh my God. That can't be. That's the Ishimura. Yeah. So this is why I love Ellie because I, th I feel like Ellie is his bridge from moving on from Nicole into something positive because Ellie's just such a 
she's hilarious, you know, she's wisecracking, she's cynical, she's just fun. And Nicole just seems so, so mommy-istic, you know what I mean? Like, Nicole's that girlfriend that represents your mother that you need to get away from. And you need to find something. Not that all moms are bad, but I don't know. I don't think Nicole was right for Isaac. But we'll see. Anyway. So we're going to get into another fight here. There's, there's one beat in this fight that I really enjoy. Um, I'm going to talk about it here in a second. So clear these out. We, don't, we really don't have to clear all these out. Only that one we really need to clear. Because you can actually use the other ones to trip up uh, the enemy that jumps over the, the packaging. Peekaboo, bitch. That's what you get for looking at me funny. Even though you don't have any eyes. So I'm so, but I'm assuming you're looking at me. How the hell did that miss? Not that time. That's your ass. See, we, we could have just baited him. He would have run right on top of the mine and blown himself up. Alright. So we have like four to go. Now, here's, here's the bit that cracks me up. So there's one hiding uh, behind the box in front of us. But we're going to trigger the the sack guy to spawn. So that guy that we were aiming at before, he's now hiding. So we, this guy spawns and then we shoot the explosive and we get him on the back. So it's a twofer. So when we get up there, you're going to see the body. I, I, I take a particular delight in murdering his dumb ass for hiding out back there. See? There goes the body. He just got stomped, bitch. Mm-hmm. So we're getting close to the boss fight here, which is again the reason why we changed uh, we changed our suit. Now that was not supposed to kill him. I was meaning to slow him down, but whatever, we'll take it. Peekaboo, bitch. Right there. That right there, that one shot kill is the reason why we uh, expended all that effort and all that energy. Peekaboo, got your ass. Uh, there's something so satisfying about that. Just so damn satisfying. To get his dumb ass to peek and just get blown the fuck up. I, I enjoy it immensely. I really like this game. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I do. Um, anyway, what the hell was I saying? I don't even remember now. It's too much enjoyment. Yeah, so we're about to get into this boss fight. I, I enjoy these non-boss fight boss fights that are in this game. Especially and because prior to this game, I was spending a lot of time in Borderlands 3. And, you know, boss fights are about dumping as much bullets and damage into a boss while trying to stave off its minions. And it's the opposite in this game. You're not trying to dump a bunch of bullets into an enemy. Most of the time, uh, the boss is not the point. It's something else. And the boss is just kind of playing the role of minion. You know, you're just kind of avoiding him or it while you try to do the thing you're supposed to do. I don't know how the hell that missed, but whatever. Now, this is dumb. I shouldn't have done that. Like, kill that one down there. I should have waited because you can actually get a twofer. Because there's a guy, there's an, uh, a necromorph hiding, and then what you can do is just shoot it, and it would just spit on him, blow him up, and blow itself up. But uh, I wasn't thinking about that at the time. Sell our junk. Get ready to get this boss fight going. Well, this non boss fight boss fight going. I'm pondering whether I should buy more stasis, but I'm like, you know what? I'm a bad motherfucker. I'm not going to buy any more stasis packs. I got this shit. See, that's the objective. The objective is to blow up the tanks, not to fight a boss. Even though that's what we're going to be doing. So, once again, non-boss fight, boss fights. One, one of the innovations, I think, 
uh, that this game provides. See, that's bullshit. They should have picked up on the first run. On the first attempt. Game trying to mess with me, but it's all good. I got your number. Got plenty of stasis left. Didn't even need the, the stasis refill. And that's it. You hear that that fear in uh, in Ellie's voice. You know, again, further another example of that wall coming down. You know, remember our first encounter, how cold and distant she was, and how she thought making friends or having any connection is going to be a liability. But you could hear how uh, how concerned she was that we get up there. At the end of the day, people need people, man. You know, like I'm recording this, what, in, uh, 2020, July 2020. We're still at the height of the pandemic in the, in the United States. We're uh, physical distancing should still be a thing. And um, sort of the need for connection, the need to be seen and to see others is... I think it's kind of foundational to our species. He's using the solar beam. We gotta stop the transport now. Oh, okay, this line is kind of cheesy, but I like it. Sometimes you just gotta embrace the cheese, man. You know what I mean? Like you just gotta embrace the camp. Just enjoy it. We can't all be serious all the damn time. Ishimura, man. This is where it all began. So I, I really like the introduction of the Ishimura into this series. Taking us back to where it began. Now, I want to point out, this is going to be a fantastic example of what I was talking about, about how this game built tension. So we just came out of this boss fight. We just came out of this sort of heightened escape. And then nothing is going to happen for a very long time. And then on, on top of that, we're going aboard the Ishimura where this whole shit started to go down, right? And so we have this expectation that something's supposed to happen, yet nothing happens for a really long time. So like the first time I played through this, every door I opened, every elevator I went into, I'm waiting for something to happen. So nothing is happening. And all you, so just building the tension, the tension, the tension, this tension. This game just does such a fantastic job of building tension. I also want to point out the uh, the mass, the tape, the tarp covering everything, right? So the visual sense of this ship in repair. But look at all the red. That could be blood. Think about it, right? Because we've gone through all these zones. There's all this blood splattered on the wall. But here we are with this tarp, but it's outlined and edged in what could look like blood splatter, right? So there's that kind of visual cue. Look at that. Look at that. That could be blood right there, but it's not. It's tape. They could have used a different color. They could have used purple or blue or something, but they're using blood red. So, again, the tension building. So this is the end of this episode. And thank you guys for watching, and uh, hopefully I will catch you in the next one. Laters.